Well, hey, everybody. Thanks for coming. Um, this is the uh, What's Up with White Wolf and Onyx Path seminar panel general goofballness with me and Eddie. Um, I'm Rich Thomas, uh, owner and creative director of Onyx Path. This is Eddie Webb, uh, works for CCP, who is the, uh, the company that merged with White Wolf, oh, like 842 years ago, and uh, is our is our friend and representative over there at that uh, the parent company. So, um, want to want to go through this. The only thing I have to tell you guys is that uh, I have another panel at. What's, it, what's the next number? Two. 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 <laughs> uh, <laughs> one plus one. Uh, and uh, is our release schedule. And uh, um, yeah, one of us plus minus <laughs> minus four months. Yeah. Um, and uh, and we'll be ducking out just a little bit before the full hour, but Eddie will continue to juggle and amuse you, I'm sure. Right. Um, so, we were here last year, and, uh, and we announced that Onyx Path actually existed. I think and, that was a year ago today, actually. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and that we have licensed the classic World of Darkness, New World of Darkness, and exalted from CCP White Wolf. And we're going to do some books <laughs> again. Yay! One of the things we did was we released Mummy the Curse, which was our first New World Darkness game in how many years? <coughs> Three. Since 2009. Yep. Uh, we also, uh, in, in our efforts of giving some love all the way around, uh, wanted to do a updated version of the World of Darkness and, uh, and also wanted to provide a little deeper look thematically into, into one of the things we thought was really, really cool about the first Blue Book World of Darkness, which was the God Machine. So we did that. And then, you're going ahead of me. Um, I know. And then, we also did Werewolf the Apocalypse, 20th Anniversary Edition, Classic World of Darkness, um, a companion volume to Vampire 20th Edition from two years ago, three years ago, a decade ago. Um, and continuing to give that love to the Classic World of Darkness that we truly have, um, we put out three of the four, and the only reason the fourth one isn't out yet is that slid, slid a little bit along the schedule of the classic mage convention books um, that we had only done one of before we, we shut down and had, um, in that case, I guess, Ascension. So that was, those, those, are, those are some, some key points. Obviously, we did other things during that time period. Um, and then... We did seven successful Kickstarter campaigns in a year. And uh, <laughs> B20 Companion, first one up, jumped on it, thought Kickstarter sounded pretty cool. Maybe give it a try. Um, learned a lot, but an, an enormous amount from that, that first one, as you do after doing the first one. Uh, did uh, Vampire 20th Children Revolution, both of those books developed by the ever irascible Justin Achille. <laughs> Uh, we did Deluxe Werewolf 20 Kickstarter, which was successful beyond anything we'd ever imagined we would have as a Kickstarter, and went, how could it ever get any better than this? Mummy the Curse, which was the first time we did it for a non-deluxe classic book. That was phenomenal and fantastic, and gave us a lot of ideas on this whole stretch goalie thing. And uh, V20 Hunter x Hunter 2, which uh, really gave us some ideas about when we do supplements in Kickstarter, people are interested in these sorts of things because we had so much good feedback, uh, which is the real biggest advantage of Kickstarter. I won't go into great detail on my theories on Kickstarter because I'm sure there's some one of our damn Monday meeting blogs. <laughs> and uh, also a panel, I believe, sometime this weekend. Oh, yeah, I got that panel on Sunday. Anybody who's like wants to go to a panel on Sunday morning, I got two of them. <laughs> for, for, uh, one is um, something to do with art. And <laughs> <laughs> And the other one is... Something uh, to do with money. Something to do with <laughs> how to run a successful yes, no. Kickstarter, because here we go. Because Changing Breach just got done it. That was a fantastic thing. We took the things we learned from Hunters Hunted, applied it to Changing Breeds, and we're having books made because you guys uh, uh, who are backing them are saying, hey, this would be cool if you could put that in there. That is a, that is a sea change on how books get uh, and, and creative things happen, and it's, it's wonderful. And finally, of course, a single... Most funded tabletop RPG Kickstarter in the world. So Deluxe far. Exalted third edition Ooh. Kickstarter. Ooh. 
I don't know about Holden, if he's, how, how, how he felt about that, but, oh, I was that close to a nervous breakdown. <laughs> so, that was exhausting. So that's what we did last year, plus a few other books and a few other projects and, and fun things. Publishing models, just so, you know, Kickstarter, what the hell is a Kickstarter? Why don't you just put the books in the stores, damn you? Um, publishing model, it's not the same as it was. It's not the same as White Wolf's was, although it's an evolution of what we were doing with White Wolf back in the day. Um, we do PDFs, if, if any of you didn't notice that. Um, electronic publishing, this is, our, this is the, a real key moment. Uh, what we have decided to do as a continuing publishing model and in our real interest and dedication to improving everything we possibly can in as many steps as we can that doesn't turn it into a you know, two years product. And so far, even Werewolf 20 is not two years. Uh, we're releasing the PDFs ahead of time now for our products, getting feedback from people who are fans, basically saying, we've got how many sets of eyes between us? Uh, five. And five actual eyes. <laughs> yeah. And we can, we can put a PDF out and people around the world can look through it. 10,000 eyes is a lot better than five. So it gives a chance to do it. Then uh, we'll, we go into other things. Now the other thing we're doing with the PDFs is just to let you guys know, that's not the end of the line for e-publishing, for electronic publishing. It's just what we're perfecting now, or trying to perfect now, but that's even evolve, an evolving thing. There's a lot more we can do with electronic publishing, even just in the simple form of, if you look at some of the anthologies that we have now up on <coughs> drive through, you don't just get it in PDF form. You get it in, in EPUB and what's the other one? Moby? Moby. Moby. So we're going to keep moving in that direction. We want to get the easiest way for you to get these things into how you now digest them. If it's a book, we still have book options. If it's a tablet, we're pushing what else we can do with tablets. If you prefer to browse drive through, we're on drive through. If with these, uh, at least with the fiction, we're looking at other places. Of course, you can get uh, White Wolf or, or Onyx Path fiction. Next stage of it is the, the print on demand and or now in print. Um, physical books, they are now being released after we've gotten feedback from everybody about the PDFs. So there's a chance to, after our developers have their passes, after our editors have their passes, after our layout guy might notice something, um, we move to, it's out there, the PDF is out there, you're going to tell us if we if, you know, tweak here, thing here, that didn't make sense, why are you, sometimes you look at a paragraph long enough, it makes sense to you, even though anybody else coming to it, it doesn't. And, uh, and that's when the, the, the print-on-demand books, rather than trying to release them simultaneously. And great thing about those, they are an eternal virtual bookstore that's as easy to use as Amazon. drive through is a really easy thing to use, and the customer service is incredibly excellent. They're good, good people who want to help you. Um, and when you're there, you'll notice that by and large, we're working on three different kinds of uh, now in print books. Grayscale versions, what's called standard color versions, and premium color. Standard color is basically on the same paper as the grayscale. Premium color is a, a stronger, uh, less absorbent paper. Therefore, the color stands out more the way we intend it. Uh, it just costs more. And if you're a person who really needs the book to be as beautiful as possible, then that's the option. If you're somebody who wants to have the rules and, and has some cool looking pictures but not necessarily appreciate the art of the illustrator, then the, uh, I think the, uh, the standard color ones are really the way to go. And then, as we just went over, Kickstarter is like this magical extra uh, thing that we uh, discovered. I, I don't think anybody else has ever discovered it, but we did. <laughs> and, uh, released independently of the regular edition. This is something I cannot stress enough, and I know there are people who are upset about this. The Kickstarter edition are not really anything to do with when we release the PDF or the, the print-on-demand version because the Kickstarters are traditionally printed. They have deluxe elements to them, whether they're fully, full-blown with, you know, die-cut claw marks through metal or their mummy where it's got an emboss uh, that does not exist in the... Uh, 
in the pre print on demand version. So generally the traditionally printed versions are just that much more higher quality because that's the way those presses work. Uh, so we will release our PDFs and print on demands when it's right to do that, and we will release the deluxes when it's right to do that. So I just want to emphasize that because I know some people do really feel like, you know, if I, if I back this on the Kickstarter, why are you now making this available? The same thing I backed on print on demand, and it's not the same thing. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. And then with Kickstarter, of course, the magic of stretch goals. The magic of allowing us to do more products than we thought we'd be able to do for any given line because this Kickstarter is going really, really well and we're able to then, then do things like add a book that we couldn't fit into the schedule. But now we know that we have the financial wherewithal and usually a lot of support for it from the, from the backers during that Kickstarter. Uh, and then the one thing we're doing that people have asked about a lot, and I want to bring it up here just so everybody knows, if everybody ever asks you about this, um, just because we're doing all these things electronically does not mean that we in some way said screw you to the retailers. There are a lot of store owners out there who are fantastic, supportive, awesome people. I've talked to them time and time again at different conventions or they send me emails wanting to know how they can get our books into their stores uh, because we don't use the traditional public uh, that you know, three-tiered distribution network that we used for almost 20 years anymore. I don't like it. I think it's broken. I think it inhibits a lot of what we can do as a creative company. Um, that doesn't mean I don't like retailers. And so what we're trying to do with a few prototype programs, um, if you're looking at the Kickstarters, you'll notice we are pretty much always going to have a retailer tier uh, so that the retailers, if they want to get the deluxes, sell them in their stores. They certainly can, and um, we're doing a pilot program to about, I don't know, would say about a dozen retailers? About, yeah. Yeah, about a dozen retailers right now are utilizing a discount program for the print-on-demands. The yeah. The There's a lot that we're still doing to see what works and what doesn't work. Try to give the best discount we can. It's a different world than it was back in the day, and we, uh, we, we simply can't do everything we could do, but we're doing what we can. But I'm bummed. So, that's really what you wanted to hear about, <coughs> but I like to lay the groundwork as many times as we possibly can because no matter how many times we say something, everybody's listening at a different time, a different place, or reading it at a different place, and not everything sticks. So, thank you for bearing with me as I did the spiel. Hey, Eddie, what's going on next year? Well, we got August. August? <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, that's this month. Yeah. Oh, wow. So some I actually thought about out. not putting it in there, and then I thought, well, then there will be some completist who wanted me to say what is happening next week. So There we go. Um, we have uh, the uh, Strix uh, Chronicle Anthology, uh, a collection of uh, short stories, um, as well as previously uh, published uh, a vampire requiem fiction. Um, I even have a short story in that, so that's awesome. Oh, uh, ooh, yeah. Uh, the, the third convention book for Syndicate uh, is, is out. It's the third one or the fourth one? No. A syndicate is the third one. Point Engineers is still Point being engineers worked on. Right. Being worked okay. It's an editing. Right. So Syndicate is out. Um, uh, and that's, again, the third of, of in the... In PDF. In PDF. Oh, is that out in print on demand yet? Nope. Okay. Uh, Hunter's Hunter 2 is... The same. Completely... Uh, 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 no, it's printer proof, I saw. Yep. Okay. Yeah, down in the booth, we actually have printer proof of both Strix, uh, Chronicle, Anthology, and Hunter's Hunter 2, if you want to see what they look like in their... Uh, Print on demand form. There's a few tweaks we're going to make, so we're not selling them or anything like that. I mean, potentially right. Sunday, if you came by and gave us that puppy dog eyes, maybe we let you take it. <laughs> right now, I don't want. We, we can't sell it because we're going to make corrections. Um. So, and Hunter's Night Two is for the classic World of Darkness, uh, Vampire the Masquerade. It's it's an updates to the the seminal Hunter's Hunter book, as well as uh, thanks to the Kickstarter backers, an increase. Of uh, material covering uh, the Inquisition, uh, Twilight, uh, Project Twilight, uh, and the Arcanum. So uh, uh, that, that was very much a book that it's a very different book now than it was originally because of the Kickstarter process. And then, still upcoming, I believe, um, Mummy the uh, Curse, ready made characters. So a, a PDF of five pre generated characters from Mummy the Curse, including some uh, history for the, the mummies themselves and the collection of mummies, and some storyteller advice to help you to uh, use those. In a chronicle, and this was a stretch goal that was unlocked during the Mummy the Curse Kickstarter. 
and uh, and so you know we'll, we'll be providing links for the backers first, and then go in general. But we, I think it's all going to be accomplishable before the end of the month. So we'll see. Uh, in September, Boyd Engineers. There we go. Uh, we were just talking about that. Um, I suspect probably not September at this point if it's still in editing, but maybe, maybe. we'll see. Maybe. Again, remember we we have some. This is not a promise. This is a goal. Yeah, when we show the schedule, and I know a lot of you guys already know what I'm going to say. Because <laughs> we've been saying it a lot this weekend. <laughs> so I, I say it all the time because it, it, it's a different way of thinking of this. This is, this is our framework. This is what we're aiming to do. And if you don't have something that you're aiming to do that is, that is a little bit maybe aggressive or a little bit uh, optimistic, um, you're going to slide past it you know, if, if you don't have anything. So when is it done is going to be when it's the absolute best it could possibly be. But this gives us at least a framework to work from so we can give people contracts and your stuff needs to be in at X and things like that. Exactly. And to give you guys an idea of what we're thinking of when we're talking about you know, what's coming up for the next year. Uh, for World of 20, we have uh, Changing Breeds book, which was one of the Kickstarters we talked about a little bit earlier. And uh, I'm almost positive that one's going to slip because some new materials added to the book as part of the Kickstarter process. So that's going to have to be worked on. But that went, I remember, really well for lots of good things about how well that went and how excited people were. So I'm not 100% sure that already because uh, Stu jumped on it like the day after the Kickstarter started hiring people to do stuff. Sure. I mean, you know, because Stu has more organization in these things than I do, which is because yeah. Stu's amazing and also Scottish. Uh, <laughs> but it all so that he's, against He's him. very fun to have on a phone. Yeah, yes, he really is, especially when it's like 3 in the morning for him. Uh, and then uh, uh, from Mummy the Curse, uh, Guild Hall's The Deathless. Um, I don't know much about this, but uh, Colin, can you briefly talk about that? Sure. This is the uh, all-in-one splat book for the five guilds, and it uh, expands their histories and kind of secrets and stuff that we couldn't really cover in the core book, and also introduces a bunch of new mechanics, including a new sub-relic system and a new sub-magic system. Awesome. And then uh, October, uh, uh, Demon of Descent, which is a new New World, new, new world Darkness game. Ah, that's irritating. It's the latest. <laughs> the latest New World uh, Darkness game. There we go. <laughs> you, you should be a writer. <laughs> <laughs> you, on the other hand. I, I suck at writing, obviously. <laughs> Um, uh, Rose, can you tell us a little bit about uh, Demon of Descent? Uh, Demon of the Descent is, uh, well, if you saw the uh, God Machine Chronicle and the mythology that that introduced, uh, Demon builds on that and it allows you to play a rogue angel. It's a little bit, uh, it, it's a, a little fallen bit angel. Uh, like uh, the man who was Thursday, um, set against uh, the backdrop of theological warfare. <coughs> um, Demon's... Uh, Demons enter the world of darkness with false identities and then graft on uh, the identities of other people as they make demonic pacts and uh, submerge themselves in a uh, world of technostic espionage. Ooh. Technostic espionage. And that was in that line, and that term uh, was in my original pitch and has somehow survived to the final book. I know, that's why I was surprised. Because <laughs> it's see. good. Yeah. Uh, also, if you want to go by the booth or check this out at the, at the end of the. Uh, I don't know if we're going to get kicked out of here at the end or not, but uh, Demon. Uh, quick, quick start. start. Uh, it's a it's a proof. It's so. a proof of it, so you you can't take it, but you can certainly look at it. And we'll have it online uh, in the very near future. Very near future. Okay. Uh, then of course the uh, the record breaking exalted third edition. Um, uh, Holden, do you ever want to say something about really really briefly? It's new. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Okay, no. Uh, <laughs> a, a little less brief. <laughs> Exalted, you remember, and um, the first Exalted experience you had, hopefully, again, uh, it, it was this big, gorgeous book, this huge world, full of detail, but also full of just places to go and explore, and, and things to discover as you read through, and, uh, and new experiences. Um, that's, that's what we're going for with the X3. Uh, we built a, a completely new version of the storyteller system. Uh, just designed the ground up for cinematic action and uh, full drama. Uh, we revamped the setting so that the stuff you know and love is there, but now there's so much more as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. That's, that's, and we've got uh, amazing artists uh, putting together a full color, gorgeous movie. And we've got more. 
Uh, and then uh, more from Army of the Curse, uh, Cursed uh, Necropolis DC, which is a source book going into um, the, uh, the DC, almost like a, one of the classic finite books, is the DC area and the politics of the Arisen and how they uh, interact uh, with that and also how they can uh, uh, structure their own city-based stories. I cannot read that. It's so you small. Want me, you want me to do this one? Huh? You want me to do this one? Yeah. Because, you know, I cut and pasted it. <laughs> yeah, that is tiny. Um, so... Mage the Ascension 20th Anniversary Edition. I don't know if any of you guys are interested in that. Um, much like B20, World 20, this is Mage's uh, love letter to everyone who's ever loved Mage. And it's uh, Phil Brucato, who's, I think, certifiably insane at this point. Yes. Uh, has written uh, hundreds and thousands of words uh, by himself, essentially, to uh, really deliver... Uh, ah. what everybody loves about Mage. And, of course, you know, we'll be doing a Kickstarter and all that sort of stuff with it. Uh, Demon did, did, Guide. I, I will get there. <laughs> Demon <laughs> Translation Guide, which we had talked about trying to get out before Demon. We, we bumped it in favor of the quick start. We, we kind of felt like, uh, once started to see how, how the pieces were falling together for Demon, that it was still doable, but we would be able to do it much better, actually, after the fact. And we talked about doing a quick start, and here we've got one. So it kind of, we should have swapped those around. Uh, the Strix Chronicle, I don't know anything about that one. Maybe, <laughs> Rose, you want to? Uh, Blood and Smoke, the Strix Chronicle, is a new core book for Vampire the Requiem. Um, yes, you can see the draft right there, and I'm quite willing to let people flip through it. Um, it uh, retouches uh, every aspect of the game. Um, from, uh, from the Covenants, which, who are, which are now described in a sharper, easier to use fashion, um, to all new uh, mechanics for the disciplines and the core kindred template based on what we've learned in nine years of running the game. And uh, we've been doing an open development process for this. You can see the uh, vast majority of mechanics for the book previewed at whitewolfblogs.com. Click on Vampire the Requiem. Um, there, uh, we got a huge amount of feedback <coughs> on the blog, the forums, and Facebook, which uh, we used to uh, to modify and clarify our mechanics. Um, and uh, right now, we're going through previewing the setting. Uh, we've got four of the five covenants up, and uh, the Car Carthian movement will be coming in the next couple of weeks. Um, it's really exciting. It's not formally a second edition, but it's everything you'd want out of one. Um. Exalted, uh, the first Exalted supplement after the main book is Arms of the Chosen. Hold it. Uh, this, this, is, this is the uh, artifacts book with a particular emphasis on arms and armor. Uh, it's going to be the great big book of uh, your evocation toolkit for uh, having a lot of, of bits and pieces to use to design your own uh, storied artifacts. Um, it'll have a lot of uh, pre-made artifacts to sort of get your, your that you can just grab and just drop right into your game, or sort of examples um, of sort of the, the, the range that artifacts can cover in, in the new Exalted. It's not just uh, you know the plus one long sword that we've given a name to. If you if you were carrying volcano cover, it's probably probably forged uh, from, well, from jade and volcanic stone and forged uh, in the heart of a volcano. Tip the thing upside down, strike it in the ground, and magma and the, uh, annihilate your opponent over there. Uh, the artifacts for GX are going to be a lot more active, a lot more engaging, a lot more cool. And as, an, as a bonus appendix, we've got the War Striders. Yay. Gigantic, magical <laughs> robots that you wear. Like you do. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, uh, and then finally, as if you know, it, well, there wasn't enough, uh, Werewolf 20 Rage Across the World, which is the, what we basically did was took the idea of the extra things we wanted to say about Werewolf, but we didn't think were part of the main message for Werewolf 20, put them in this book, but did it in a form where we're going around the world. And when we're talking about the different areas, we're talking about the things that um, that people are, are that are appropriate to that. Uh, so, hold on, what's the example of that I that I'm forgetting right now? Let's say we go to X and we see what. Uh, we go to the Amazon. We find out about the war going. We go to South America. We find out about the war in the Amazon. We go to uh, 
Africa, we find out about things stirring under the Kalahari. It's a threat to the There you go. Exactly. And then we get to December. Um, Dark Ages, Darkening Sky. This is another book, much like the convention books, which we had planned on doing, we had announced on doing before we closed down the original Dark Ages line. And a lot of people, a lot of fans, talked about how they really wanted to see this book. And so um, it, is, uh, it is, I guess, midway through being written at this point, Dave? Um, first drafts are written. I am currently developing them when I get home. Um, <laughs> if you uh, ever do. If, if, if that is allowed to happen. Um, <laughs> and it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a major solar eclipse occurs in 2030. Or 20, sorry, 1230. Same thing. Big, that's a different book. I think you're <laughs> prophesizing for a moment. Yeah, 2015, Mitch. <laughs> so, 1230, there's a, there's a massive um, total solar eclipse, um, and it influenced the world in a lot of weird ways. Um, and in this book, it influenced the world in a lot more ways. It's got a chapter for um, vampire, uh, Dark Ages Fae, uh, Dark Ages Inquisitor, um, and uh, Mage, and Werewolf. So it's five chapters covering all of the Dark Ages game lines, um, and it's 12, uh, 1230, and it's going to be leading up to some of the stuff that we'll talk about whenever we get to the April. And we will. <laughs> Soon, TM. Um, Anarchs Unbound, day part 20. Uh, this is uh, actually the, the book that we're 99% sure we're going to kickstart it really, really soon for its deluxe edition. Um, next it would be the next one we do. and. Uh, it is looking at the Anarchs. Um, Justin was particularly uh, hyped up for this one, very energized for uh, the ones that he considers his people, and uh, and, I, and I think it's I think it's going to be great. And of course, by doing it with the, with the Kickstarter, we're going to have a chance for everyone who's backing to give us input into what they would like to see, either in addition or the text itself should be put up when we do the Kickstarter. So, you know. Read it, I mean, you know, the text, 99% done. Um, and you can get a really good idea for, for what it is. Justin's also been doing blogs on, uh, on our White Wolf blog site on this, so you might have an idea what it's about if you've been following it. Uh, Mommy the Curse, Book of the Deceived. Colin? Yeah, that is the uh, sort of comprehensive source book on the Lost Guild. And uh, it also contains the second part of the Metaplot Chronicle that we begin. And Guild Halls. And Demon the Descent, Flowers of Hell. The that is the player's hell. guide for Demon the Descent. Uh, it'll cover things like hijacking the God Machine's infrastructure, uh, founding your own conspiracies, and uh, a lot of very empowering options along those lines. Okay. And then, 2014. Hey, we're really close. It's January. Uh, <laughs> Hunter the Vigil. God, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Fake title here. And Matt? Yeah, uh, Vampire, Mage, and Werewolf each got their own Hunter antagonist book. Now we're going to cover the rest of the line. Uh, so Changeling, Geist, Promethean. And uh, David is working on a God Machine update for Hunter. Okay. Um, then... As you know, we did God Machine Chronicle. We did Strix Chronicle, or Blood and Smoke. And now we do... It again. It again. It's written right. It again. I changed it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Not Instagram. It's the Instagram Chronicle. No. <laughs> For Werewolf the Forsaken, their Chronicle is the Itagram. It, <laughs> it again Chronicle. And, and uh, this is the this this is the <laughs> lead into that just like in what we've done previously, where each of these chronicle books gets an anthology to really talk about it on a the, the, on a fiction level, getting different aspects of it, so that you can kind of come into it from a lot of different directions to kind of grasp what's going on with the guy we should grasp what, what is going on with the Strix, or the idiot gam. Um, so that's that's the fiction book, and then we get to uh, the realm for Exalted. Uh, I want to go a little bit faster through some of these. Uh, as you can tell, when we start to do these, the ideas are there. If you want to read the write-ups and you haven't gotten this already, we have 
uh, our brochures down at the booth 1201 where we're exhibiting down the exhibit hall. It has all this. This is actually just basically the presentation version of what's in the, in the brochure. So I'm just going to kind of say, if you're an Exalted fan and Exalted Third, the realm doesn't tell you anything, um, you, you can read this. <laughs> all right, uh, World 20 Book of the Worm. Yep. Uh, 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 talking about uh, stuff to challenge the group, uh, Pentex, uh, Worm antagonists, and including an update to Black Dog Game Factory, which I wrote, including their acquisition by the Evil Eye Sonic Corporation. <laughs> <laughs> I got it approved by CCP, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> but really, Eddie, what is evil? <laughs> Eddie, aren't you on the approvals board? Uh, yes, I am on the approvals board. <laughs> Funny how that works. I have used my power for awesome. <laughs> or <laughs> evil. <laughs> Is there going to be a black spiral gift for slapping people and asking where they're going? No, right now? Uh, but there, there are stats for playing space accountants, so. <laughs> Good luck. Who's unanimously approved? Uh, okay, it's February. Uh, Rates of the Blood for Vampire the Masquerade. Uh, very, very briefly, um, this is uh, the book I'm working on. Uh, it's going to be an update of uh, Blood Magic Vampires, not only Thaumaturgy, but also Sabat Raite, um, the Mystics of uh, the Anarchs, uh, in the True Black Hand, the Inkanu, and Infernalism. Okay. Uh, Secrets of the Covenants. Secrets of the Covenants. Uh, there's some covenants in Requiem. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them, and they have secrets. <laughs> a plan book style. If you saw the plan books a few years ago, this is a treatment of the covenants in the same style. Okay. Mummy uh, Curse Sathis ascends. This is uh, the third, I guess you would say. I don't want to, but it's the third part of what we've been leading to with with Mummy. And uh, Colin, if you want to, yeah, it, it's essentially the historical role-playing supplement for one <coughs> You know, you need for a game like that, considering the protagonists, and it examines each of the software <coughs> turns, which are these periods where they all wake up and do stuff. And it also has part three of the Everest Chronicle. Yeah. Cool. March 2014. <coughs> Werewolf 20: The Umbra. Um, it's more Umbra stuff. Yeah, there's some like um, Umbra stuff, you gotta float around. And, and Umbra so stuff, yeah. sub Umbra. Uh, no, it's, it, it's basically, we, we, we did, we, I think we did a fair bit of Umbra stuff. There's uh, a, just uh, the Umbra chapter. And inf information yeah. and, and what it was all about mm. for World 20. But yeah. there's so much more, and this is the book where we we'll really go into it and, and look at that a lot more. Um, Demon's Player's Guide, which this apparently is, the, is different the, from... This, uh, it's, the, it's the same book. We accidentally listed it twice when we were making it. We're doing it twice. It's an awesome book. <laughs> yeah. We're going to give it two different titles and see if and who likes which version. We are a professional <laughs> company. We'll see if uh, we released it. We hit. The book's so nice, we released it twice. No, actually, in reality, I didn't expect that uh, that Rose and, and Matt McFarland were going to be capable of, of uh, getting to the Player's Guide so fast. And so... Flowers of Hell was actually in there to be a, uh, a smaller book that would be a lot, that, you know, again, a sort of an overflow of things we wanted to talk about in the main book, things that wanted to focus in tighter, and instead they said, oh, no, we're working on the player's good. <laughs> yeah, if, yeah if, we, if we miss Flowers of Hell's date, we'll hit this one. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Hey, I wasn't done. What'd you do? Okay, fine. And then Dragon Blood, what fire has wrought, which will be, this is actually worth saying a little something about. Home. Uh, it's the hardback that lets you play Dragon Blood. Yay! Alright. Alright, uh, next. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's going to be uh, kickstarted, so if you've got the fancy version of the X3, you can have another fancy version. We might do like the red leather, so they'll look nice next to each other. Um, it's a hardback, you can play Outcasts, uh, Scions of the Realm. From look shy. Uh, we're gonna they basically uh, just bring back everything that was good, and we're gonna spice up the stuff that is already good, and make it better. And yeah, very good. All right. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> April. This is the thing that this is the thing that David wanted to, to, to make sure everybody hears about. Uh, Vampire Twenty: The Dark Ages. Uh, it's it's a look at the Dark Ages with Vampire Twenty rather than the anniversary edition of the Dark Ages, because we're not really there yet. Um, so it's bringing all the, the, the awesome stuff of, uh, of the Dark Ages, the original Vampire Dark Ages line, into the V20 uh, uh, rule set continuum, if you will. Dave, do you have anything you wanted to like pop up with that that maybe is a little more... Um, you know. Basically, what, basically what, what um, we're focusing on doing is um, doing clearly a V20 version of Dark Ages, but um, 
we're going to add about a decade of, um, of heating up, preparing for you know, the death of La Sombra, um, the Anarch Revolt. And so we're going to give you guys a lot of tensions to play with um, and a lot of ways that you can, um, you can ramp up your chronicles to get ready to murder Antediluvians. Like you do. Like you do. Like standalone? It'll be standalone. Yeah, it's going to be standalone book. Uh, at, David and I talked a little bit about it over the weekend, and we're going to talk some more. But basically, uh, uh, because the B28 book actually pulled a lot from Dark Ages from a rules perspective, it's going to kind of inherit that back into David's book. So it's a standalone book to get back to that Vampire Dark Ages feel as opposed to the supplemental. Awesome. Yeah. I have all intention of trying to do what V20 did by bringing in a lot of the bloodlines, a lot of the, the lost right. clans, that sort of thing. Um, bringing those into the fold. Um, Dark Ages was particularly notorious for having tons of those. Right. Um, so we're going to see how many of them we can bring in um, and sort of add into this one massive tome full of awesome. Sweet. Yep. 500 pages is what it says here. So. It is massive. Wow. Yes. Yeah, I mean, we might as well just assume that going in, right? Right. Um, <laughs> The Itagam Chronicle, Gam. Chronicle. <laughs> for, uh, for that Forsaken game. Uh, and this is, uh, this is going to be the Chronicle book uh, that's going to allow you to both uh, play up uh, the Itagam and also to, to do the same sort of thing that we're doing with the other two Chronicle books, which is saying we've had what, eight, nine years of people playing this and loving it. There are definitely things that need to be tweaked and changed and, and altered, and then also brought around to where the, a lot of the, the cool uh, rules that the God Machine Chronicle uh, established for these Chronicle books. So it should be pretty pretty awesome, I think. Towers of Mighty for Exalted, and this is a, actually a setting book. Uh, this is a book on ruins, and, uh, going from Rathus, Mahalanka, uh, where Roxy, Queen of Fangs, a bunch of places you don't know about, a bunch of places we mentioned but never covered, like the Lost Lost. Uh, this is if you like scavenger lord type characters, if you like going spelunking for first age artifacts, this is the book that will uh, cover you. And it's going to have an appendix in the back for uh, the Manson's. Okay. We'll look back and update the, the, the Manson creation system for second edition. Yeah. Uh, we get to uh, May, and we've got uh, Curse of Necropolis Real, which is a companion book. Uh, came out of the Kickstarter uh, for Mummy, but is, uh, is another location. We've kind of been thinking with New World Darkness, we like to have a, a U.S.-based location and also a worldwide location that people can, can mix and match and have fun with. Um, we're aiming at getting Scion 2nd Edition out in May next year. Joe Carricker, who is represented by this lovely plush <laughs> bear. bear. <laughs> it's Joe. It's obviously a bear. Well, that's why I wanted to check. Um, at, is, uh, is, is working as well as he can, but Joe's had some, some major back issues. And, uh, and so we're, we're hopeful, but uh, I'd like, like to say more about Scion. I, we're basically just teasing it right now with the idea that the first Scion book is actually not Scion Hero. It's Scion Origins. And then we get to Scion Hero. And then we get to Demigod. Then we get to God. So that's kind of some of our thinking. Uh, in June, I'm going to kind of roll through this a little bit faster. Mage 20 Digital Web 3.0. Kind of kind of have to do this book, don't we? Yep. Um, <laughs> Facebook. If, if Phil was here, he could tell you a lot more about it, but he's writing. Um, Fallen World Fiction Anthology. This is for Mage the Awakening. It is now the preamble to its chronicle, which is the Fallen World Chronicle. Awesome stories, let you get into it, let you understand what's coming for the actual chronicle itself. Exalted, the ex exigence, can you describe the exigence in two sentences? Why this book? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I'm going to go. <laughs> Fool. Make your own excellence. And uh, we, we did a huge presentation on it in a podcast still up on YouTube uh, during the Kickstarter, so if you really want to know what's going in the book, you can see it there. It's a pretty complicated topic. So it's going to be Kickstarter, and it's supposed uh, it's to make your own excellence. Also, this paragraph is real long, so you can read that also, for sure. Also, if you have some just ready-to-play new guys, if you just like, uh, that sounds like a work, well, you can just play this There's a new excellent type in there for you. Okay. Um, Vampire 20. 
ghouls. I think we all know who they are. And uh, Demon Storytellers guy, which doesn't have two uh, <laughs> things. We're just doing Yet. one of those. Yes. <laughs> okay. August. Oh, dear God. <laughs> August gets crazy go nuts. So I'm going to work my way down here to first say... Dark Eras? That, yes, New World of Darkness, Dark Eras. Next year in August, we're not going to be doing a new uh, splat or a new supernatural, however you want to say it, game line. What we needed to do is to go back to a lot of the... Because we have nine game lines now. Right? With Demon, we now have nine. I think <coughs> a lot of game lines have not had a lot of new supplements because it's very hard to rejuvenate the New World of Darkness uh, product lines and give everything a focus and give everything a book or, or a thing like that. So this is our chance, no matter what game line you love about the New World of Darkness, there is going to be an era in history that is going to be in this book. And it's going to be done with Kickstarter in a way that we haven't done with any of the other books yet, and that is the, the, the nine chapters are guaranteed. They're going to be in there. But past that, we're going to be getting feedback via the Kickstarter from backers <coughs> as to what else you want to see. And if we get the sort of feedback that we need another Requiem era, we'll add that to it. Um, there's other things that we wanted to do that don't fit the nine, and frankly the nine in and of themselves were big enough. Uh, I know that one of the stretch goals is definitely because he's been grabbing me and punching me against walls to do this. Matt McFarlane really wants to do an era for World of Darkness Innocence. And that will be a stretch goal if we achieve him with that Kickstarter. So it's going to be a lot more playing with what you can do with Kickstarters. I think it's going to be an awful lot of fun. Uh, different skies for Exalted. Um, I'm going to just say... Well, Same material. Yes. Scavenger Lands and the West. Yep. Yeah. So... Notice we're not doing compass of terrestrial directions, 1, 4, 7, 19, whatever it's. It, the, these are going to come into this in a different way, and I th we hope a very, make them very vital and less seeming like a travel log or you know, an encyclopedia entry, uh, which is not saying anything bad about that kind of thing, but that's not, the day. dynamic new Exalted 3 is, uh, is going to be well served by this. And finally, mm -hmm. for myself and for Mr. Ian Watson, um, we want to release uh, the first two books in the Trinity Continuum, the relaunch of the Trinity uh, game line uh, next year here, Gen Con. Um, and that is uh, the Trinity Continuum book itself, which is sort of a master book or like the World of Doctors core book for Trinity, which will enable you to uh, play a modern day uh, chronicle, give or take a decade here and there, depending on how, what you want to do with it. Um, and has the base rules for the entirety of the Trinity Continuum, and then Trinity Continuum Aeon, which will be Trinity Continuum, real little, Aeon. <laughs> and it um, is the relaunch of the Aeon science fiction game that, uh, that we did with White Wolf years ago. So that's in August. Say, later in 2014, what else could we do? And I wasn't sure I was going to do this, so I thought maybe I'll just tell you guys now. Wraith the Oblivion 20th Anniversary Edition is definitely going to happen uh, next year. Woo! Tweet the crap out of that. <laughs> and the only man who could possibly bring it to you, Rich Dead Guy Dansky, is developing it. Um, so, hey, cheer for Rich Dansky. <laughs> One of, the, one of the great developers of our time and willing to do an insane freelance job along with his normal job at Red Storm Entertainment where he's been for Working on all of the years. Clancy games, yeah. Yes. Okay, so that is the, the, pretty much the big, big stuff that we have. Um, there are other things that will be happening, obviously, in 2014 that, that the only one I'm talking about right now because everybody wants to know about it is Wraith. But there's a whole heck, second half of the year there that we haven't uh, talked about. Probably what will happen is most of the things you see here will fall into that part of the year. <laughs> Look, the 20th. Yeah. Um, we have a little bit of time. and uh, So look, red lights back there. If somebody could just, uh, just dim, dim back up the lights, maybe. Undim? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> in, in, enlarge <laughs> down. <laughs> uh, any questions?
We, we're also, by the way, we have another panel, uh, 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock? What is four it? 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock. That is classic world of darkness. Uh, that is the classic world of darkness. So if you have more in-depth questions about the things you've seen here about classic world of darkness, that's a great place to, to, to question us about. I'm, you know. Anyway. It exalted the arms that shows it. Will there be any kind of artifact creation system so we can get down and put together our own location and artifacts? Absolutely not, because that will be in the report. Excellent. So currently, I've noticed that this white fellow is going to be giving me a draft to work with at the end of the week when I get back from Gemini. Hey, who is that? This is Eric Brandt. Hey, uh, He wrote uh, Heaven's Reach, and he is awesome. I think I've written on every edition of Exalted so far. So. Cool. Oh, let's not break the streak. Yeah. <laughs> not fourth edition yet. <laughs> um, other other questions? Anybody? Anybody? The black shirt, the guy that's hand went up first. That's you. Oh, uh, uh, will Master Winters be illiterate? His natural state. <laughs> I don't know, but he's damn buff. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so he has a <laughs> yes. And the would bring it up, go for it. <laughs> um, if we're just now talking about drafts of things like artifacts, creation systems, I don't know if I had you about this, but how solid is that? October? For Exalted 3? Yeah, October for you. It's best week, you know, best, best guess, like I say. It's, it's a gold it's, shit for uh, the real release date. So you heard anything first, it's coming in six years. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> no! What are you saying? Six years ish. <laughs> hey, let's not pin that down. Okay, before I point to anyone else who's already asked a question, is there anyone who'd like to ask anything about any product besides Exalted? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any more uh, teasers about Scion? Um, like, the, well, anything I, that might be coming out in the new books? Uh, like what? Ask Joe what, what, would you like, no, yeah. what would you like to ask me a question? I'll tell you. If I know. Um, well, uh, how, <laughs> I have so many. <laughs> What's the big difference th uh, there will be from the last edition to this and uh, mechanics and play? Well, the mechanics are going to work. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be throwing rules. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Definitely throwing rules will be in there. Um, <laughs> Do you want me to? Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Scion doesn't use Exalted Second Edition system. It's using its own. Uh, because we own Scion rather than license it yeah, from CCP. It doesn't use the storyteller or storytelling game systems. It uses its own system, which we're designing for it right now. It is a dice pool system. It still uses pools of D10. But story one told. that's going to be allow you to go from story told, yeah. told. pre-heroic <laughs> level of guy on the street all the way up to gods. So, and scale with Oh, that. you just got story told. <laughs> <laughs> You're way too white. <laughs> Canadian, of course he is. <laughs> About the Strix the Irish Chronicles, guy. I know that we've had the Strix in previous games. Right. Um, you know, they're the kind of occult evil owls. And since the Chronicles are going to be named after them, how largely do they fit into it? I mean, Not at all. Are they going to be more deep? <laughs> 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 so, so, I mean, it, it seems like the Strix right. before were kind of like, I don't want to say, I didn't, it seems like if you're going to center the whole Chronicle around them, you know, they should be, there's more about them. I just kind of wanted to see if we can get some hints about what there is about them. They are substantially expanded. Okay. What we're uh, looking at is that uh, previously the Strix sort of had a streak of hedonistic nihilism, and that's certainly true of some Strix, but what you're going to see is that these are spirits that hold grudges, these are spirits that have modus operandi, they have motives. Uh, now those motives and those modus operandi are filtered through the uh, lens of being a uh, body jack and owl spirit, so they're pretty bizarre. But, uh, and to put some numbers on it, 10,000 words of Strix building toolkit, 20,000 words of example Strix. And are Strix going to be like 
Are they player character fodder, or are they going to be uh, just NPC fodder? Just NPCs. I wouldn't right. even call them antagonists, although you can use them that way. They're more like catalysts for big events in your uh, for big events in your conflict. You sort of slam one into the side of your conventional vampire story, and it sticks in its claws, and it won't let go. And squeaks, um, squawks, you know, like an owl does. And, and squawks. <laughs> rich, rich. Yeah. What? Anyway. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so yeah, they're going to be substantially expanded from when we, from uh, what we've seen in the past. Cool. Uh, although, uh, if you like them in the past, you're definitely going to find those things in the new incarnation. Yep. Uh, you had a question. I may be the only person who came here and wanted to ask more about the business model. Sure. You had like a year or two years to settle, settle into this with splitting things between the different companies and moving into e-publishing. Uh, are, are you? happy with where that's ended up? Do you think you're reaching something that you'll look forward with, or are you still kind of trying out new things constantly and looking well, for Well, I hope to say that we are never stopping trying out new things. Like, we are going to continually evolve. I mean, we're, our toe is in electronic, real, you know, electronic publishing right now. There's so much more we could do, even just with PDF form. What's that game you like? The, the, the PDF form? Nova Praxis. Nova Praxis. Beautiful, beautiful use of, of what you can do yeah. with the PDFs that is not based on the idea that it's just a port from a book. So I think there's a lot more that can happen with that sort of stuff. Happy? <laughs> I'm thrilled. Uh, with every little setback we've been having with different things, with the schedules slipping the way that they do, because we really want to deliver the high quality. I was the guy who was hitting people in the back of the head and saying, I don't care if it's ready to go out. It has to go, because if we don't get it out, we lose the print window. We, that means that the printer is not going to deliver to Barnes & Noble on time. Barnes & Noble will then therefore cut the order by 40% and um, return whatever books they have if they really get pissed off at us. So I had to do that stuff, and I don't want to do that for Onyx Path. I don't think I, we have to do that in current publishing. Uh, we have so many other opportunities to put high, the highest quality uh, products out there, and sometimes that's going to take a little longer. Um, you know. Exalt the three perfect example. These guys are these guys are making an intricately finely made watch with all these moving parts at the same time. The watch is still running. It's very very hard to do. So you need to go. This. So other than exalted questions, and did that, did that answer your question? You've, yeah. Anything else on a business model sense that I need to answer? Like anything? Could we bring up what we're doing with uh, training? You certainly could because I have to go. Okay. Uh, so, thank you guys so much for being here. And these guys are all still here, so ask away. All right, I'm still your seat. And I'm very sorry that this is how this is scheduled out, but that guest of honor thing, they just tell you where you have to go, and if you don't go, they shoot you. They shoot you. Yeah. <laughs> what we're going to be doing with very like, some people have complained about the, the idea that we're doing a single core rule book for the Trinity Continuum. Because, hey, I don't want to use two books. Well, what we can do with our current publishing model is we can take the rules part of the PDF of uh, the Trinity Continuum core book and stick that in the Trinity Continuum Aeon book. So you still only need one book. We can split it up and rearrange it so you get the book that you want. Does anybody have any other questions? Well, we'll take exalted questions now if you want to. <laughs> yes? Um. As far as the quality compares between the traditional print runs and what you currently have with like print on demand, how close do you feel it is to becoming pretty much on par? Um, unfortunately, Mike, Matt left. Well, Mike, you want to feel that? It's getting there. <clears throat> Basically, right now, um, the only real difference right now is the paper stock on the, the premium edition. It's the same way as basically we were using back in the day. It's actually the same way we were using for uh, new wide books. Uh, from 2005 up. Mm -hmm. Basically, one thing I would really love to do if we never get it is basically just coated paper right. on the interior so I can get the blacks to pop. Also, end papers. I really like those. Oh, end papers. I would love to right. get those again, and they actually are working on trying to figure out how to do that. Yeah. Excellent. Um, but uh, uh, certainly, uh, I have time and again, when I first, I was, my, my previous job when I was with CCP was actually to start working on the print demand product when it was internal CCP. And uh, there's been a number of times where people have this perception that print demand looks like this. And it's, just, it's not true. It's absolutely not true. Um, one time I actually walked into, this is like five, six years ago, I understand. Uh, I walked into someone's office with uh, two copies, uh, a book we'd done before, and a print demand copy I had purchased. Sat down in front of and said, tell me which one's which. That was my office and it was Vampire Revised. Yes, it was, actually. <laughs> um, and uh, they couldn't do it. 
it, it, from a casual glance, it's very hard to tell. If you're intimately familiar with these books, you have them side by side, you can see subtle differences, but it's very hard to tell them apart. And again, that was five, six years ago. Um, now it's getting harder and harder. And in fact, Print on Demand allows us to do things with these books we actually couldn't do easily with the uh, traditional printing model, like doing color. We do get color and black and white version simultaneously. We could do that much easier now than we could before because that requires separate print runs and whatnot. So, or hardcover and softcover. Yeah, exactly. Um, so uh, uh, if you're looking at a, you know, am I going to get a spiral bound photocopied book? Absolutely not. Um, if it's going to be exactly, utterly, completely identical down to the micro atom of what the books were, we're getting very close, but we're not quite there yet. Does that answer your question? Yeah, and actually, like the, the, the only way you can really tell the uh, trade secret, um, if you open the back cover, there's like a, a the, our, our purity printer uses puts a special back page in there. It has like a little note saying where it was printed at. That's the only way you can tell the difference. Yeah. There's and a question way at the back there. Yeah. Uh, Rise of the Blood, there was a post uh, on the Dead Hangers uh, talking about possibly doing a Kickstarter for it. Is that still. I, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Uh, Rise of the Blood? Yeah. There was originally some talk about possibly doing a Kickstarter run with it. Is that still a concept? Oh, Kickstarter's still going to happen as far as no frights the blood. Um, what happened is uh, uh, Justin's Anarchs Unbound was being developed as I started Rights of the Blood. So Anarchs Unbound is next in queue for Kickstarter. Um, so I don't know when the rights Kickstarter's going to happen because really Rich plans from Kickstarter to Kickstarter event, which is the only sane way to do it. Um, but uh, we had talked initially about uh, Kickstarting for Rights of the Blood. Um, and as we learned from 172, uh, additional material, something that we're probably going to focus uh, uh, somewhat on for Rights of the Blood, and I've already talked to some of the writers about additional material elements for Rights of the Blood. Um, uh, but we have not had anything formal, nothing I want to announce here because I don't know how much that will change. But uh, that's going to be certainly part of it. I mean, I, I've floated ideas like uh, another anthology, um, I've floated ideas like uh, uh, new kinds of thaumaturgy, stuff like that, but I, we'll have to see how it goes. But I, I, as far as I understand at this point in time, Kickstarter is still definitely in the card for Rights of the Blood. Uh, generally, we look for uh, generally we look for places where the Kickstarter will enable us to do more with an individual book concept. Um, for example, uh, books that we think we can add uh, additional chapters to that are intuitive. Mm -hmm. I mean, like Eddie's talking about adding. I don't want to say it, but he's he, about adding specific types of sorcery to rites of the blood. <laughs> Uh, this may be a surprise, but there's and, lots of blood magic in, in Mesquerade. Uh, with Mummy, we were able to substantially increase the number of supplements via Kickstarter. Um, we're, so really, um, uh, I, I don't want to say we focus exclusively on stretch goals, but we look for places where Kickstarter can let us do things that we couldn't do for just uh, uh, if we uh, did the book by itself. Okay, let's see another panel coming in, guys. So uh, thank you very much for coming. Thank you, everyone.